table. It's Mus Harlan, Tim Carter. Hello. R2D2. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's cool. A nice custom plate for it. That's cool. I like it. So, what's the attraction for this project for both of you? You can start there. Yeah, sure. sure. Um, I love a game, right? I'm um, a big Frank West fan, and um, I, I love Dead Rising 2, and then with Chuck Green, but they did off the record, and um, I fell in love with that. But um, look, I like zombies, but I, I like the universe of Dead Rising. It's very unique. I don't know how much you play the game, but um, unlike other kind of zombie universes where the whole world is apocalyptic, right? You just have this one area, and it's quarantine, and you know that in three days the place is going to get firebombed if you don't figure it out, right? And I love that. I love the ticking clock, right? I kind of think it was like 24, right? Show 24 meets Night of the Living Dead. Um, and I thought it was a chance for us to tell a cool story um, and not try to be The Walking Dead or anything else, right? Uh, we could have some lightheartedness, but frankly, just, you know, I mean, take your favorite IP in the world. Take your favorite comic book, your favorite game, and think you're going to have a chance to turn this into a film, right? That's what was exciting about it. And for me, I think it was, you know, I come from a game development background, so I've worked on a number of open world games where I'm crafting the story. That's usually if I'm working in gaming, I'm writing the story, and, and you know, I'm always sort of thinking about, okay, well, how are we going to, how would I make this work in live action? And so even when I very first played Dead Rising, it was all about, okay, well, what's, where's the through line and the, the movie to be found in here? Uh, and, and what are the things that are unique about it? The tone is extremely unique, the... You know, the sort of, um, as you say, the setup and the sense that the rest of the world is watching this and the way that they watch hurricanes and, and other natural disasters and there's sort of an almost voyeuristic appeal to it uh, for outsiders that's, you know, sort of perverse, but it's definitely there. Uh, and then, you know, that it's a media event and that it's also a political event and it has, you know, sort of ramifications for the way the rest of the country operates. All of those things were really attractive and allowed us to tell a story that had all this different stuff going on in it. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. No, it's uh, you know I think a lot of people, a lot of people in our crew wanted to be part of a game project, and you know we had a TV set up inside the production office where people would go and play the game and pick other things up from it. You know I still see things when I watch, and I've watched this thing 500 times, 800 times. Who knows in editing, right? But. Uh, you know, would, I'd see that set deck were in there one day and put a whole bunch of stuff just in the background on a wall that they obviously got out of the game. Mm -hmm. No one came and said, hey, we want to do yep. this. It's, can we have permission? They're just like, well, we're going to decorate it somehow. It might as well all be the in, things that were in either Dead Rising 1, 2, or 3. You know, if you look at the cast as well, I mean, we did very well in the kind of cast we got. And um, they were passionate about trying to be in this universe, right? I mean, for instance, Jesse, I saw his tape and... Um, he's a good actor right um, but he really kind of can play that action hero and it's not just something he had the opportunity to do before in, in his past and if you watch it I, I try to find the stunt man try to find his stunt double how many times does he appear in actual life yeah. once yeah. yeah just he did it all all of it and that right? was because there was no way in hell I was letting him do what he, yeah, he, he, he would have done it he uh, he's like, like no you're not allowed yeah he's like after day one, if you watch a show when they're jump, he jumps off the side, he lands on this railroad tie. He had a hematoma this big. It was day one of filming. His entire hip, black and blue. And same with Megan. Hey, you, this gorgeous girl, you think she's going to break in half. But she wanted to be this action hero, and she was tough, right? So they all got into it. And, you know, and Virginia Madsen, I mean, you know, Oscar caliber. And, you know, she's like, oh, I like zombies. Can I kill? Can I be a zombie? Can I? And so everybody got excited about understanding that there's a different world out there and another fan base that might see them in a different light as well. So the casting was a lot of fun on this. If you had the chance, like, what franchise would you turn into another movie? Well, we have a bunch. <laughs> we have a bunch that we actually... Number one. Number one. Well, let, let's, talk about one that we'll, let's talk about one we'll never get. How about that, right? Yeah. Well, we can... I'll, I'll say something after you, but we each have our favorites. Yeah, I mean, we'll just talk about one. You know, I mean, if um, the Uncharted series is great, right? Um, yeah, that would be... I mean, look, we're not going to get any Naughty Dog titles. Yeah. Are we Naughty Dog? You going to give us a yeah, title? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, we... Yeah. Last we went a ways down the road with that, that would be Sony, but, right? Yeah. But um, we again, we look for titles that are interesting to us, but we think we can adapt well to live action. So um, this is zombie, ninja, murder mystery, crime thriller, mafioso, things that will have its core audience, but we think can spill to a wider audience as well. Um, doesn't mean that there's there are fantasy based games that we're really interested in. Um, 
My number one is uh, a game that's kind of, I guess it's lost a bit of its popularity now, but Alan Wake. If you remember that? I would do anything. Remedy, anything. Yeah. I, I asked them for that title three yeah. times a year, oh, yeah. religiously. <laughs> Between Remedy, it's almost to the point now where I need to talk to Remedy because they're like, oh, come on. We just can't listen to Tomas <laughs> ask for it anymore. Uh, I want that title so bad. Yeah. Can you imagine? And then, right? it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the shining meets Twin Peaks, right? And just, oh, yeah. Oh. And we shoot it in the Pacific Northwest. Look, they, they look came Jesse. To, doesn't he look like Alan Wake? We'll put him back in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they came right to where uh, we typically film to actually do all the um, play shots to create the sets for Alan Wake. So it's literally from places yeah. where we could um, And for me, it's XCOM. And it's, I'm the other way. I actually have to stop talking to 2K because I'm just annoying the living hell out of them now. Uh, but it's, you know, do XCOM as Battlestar Galactica. You got high-level politics, and you got then the guys, the action soldiers on the ground that are going to die like flies and are terrified the whole time. And yeah. I played every XCOM game, including the board game. I wrote about the early XCOMs for Computer Gaming World in the mid-90s. Like, that's how far back I go with that franchise. So, one day. This is a great, like, weekly show. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What game would you like to see? Oh, I would love a Metroid. I would love a Metroid movie. That would, yeah. You and a lot of my friends, <laughs> for sure. It's my favorite series of all time. Or it's all the thing would be good too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, right. Every, every rumor that comes out about that, notwithstanding, yeah. right? Yeah. What do you? How do you react when you see something like Virginia Madsen wants to come read for your movie? What do you think? Oh my God, that's never going to happen. Or well, dance a little jig. I think. Yeah, it's funny when, did, when Tim was creating the character. I mean, we kind of used her as our prototype, yeah. right? I mean, both from like, familiar with her work, and you know, we just let's take a punt, see if we can get her, right? And um, reached out to the agents, and, and and this passionate plea. I mean, look, you can see we like these games, right? And you know, we're going to tell the story, and it's going to be a, a huge fan base. It's going to see you that you may have not seen sideways, right? I'm just saying, it's fantastic work, but. Um, that's appealed to a lot of people and um, you know we're going on to our next projects and same thing it's like hey let's all get involved in this and, and I have a very simple premise which I think that, um, that video games are theoretically kind of the next comic books in terms of adaptation and that the generation that grew up on video games is now moving into power in Hollywood you'll still have your evergreen comic book properties for sure right they'll keep going but a lot of video games need to be told and I think they can be told better than they have in the past I mean we can all agree at this table that 98% of them um, and even we still face challenges don't get me wrong um, but having a group in Hollywood that now appreciates and grew up in video games and then having collaboratively like Tim works with the dev studio and the publisher and everybody with the actual game to get the kind of look and feel of the characters and everything before we go to the studio to try to make something I think this new model is evolving um, but I think we can tell some great stories and yeah. I think it's you know it's, it's interesting because we we always say the same thing right that the video games are the next comic books and, and there's a transition in Hollywood and it was actually for the f All right. for the first time as we're talking we've said this a thousand times so we're part of that <laughs> we grew up playing video games yeah. and, and working on them building them thinking about them so you know it's yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I could say more playing. but yeah exactly thank you guys. thanks for your time guys cheers